Yo, what up? Welcome back to another probably very sexually charged episode. Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, I somewhat recently received a mysterious package from a viewer in Japan, and in it was some FP100C for 4x5. Yep, FP100C, the pack film of your dreams that is no longer manufactured by Fuji. I feel like I'm saying that a lot these days. Back in the olden days, FP100C was kind of known as being a relatively cheap way to shoot positive, instant, peel apart type film. But like anything, this pack film also found a dedicated cult following amongst the instant film enthusiasts of the universe. So much so that when Fuji discontinued it in 2016, many people started hoarding whatever they could find and prices rose from about $10 to over 100 slammers a pack. It's kind of like crypto in that way except pack film is real and is actually used for something. Anyway, the El Problemo Grande is that I do not have a 4x5 camera, and I'll be damned if I'm gonna break my back again lugging around my 8x10 camera just for some 4x5 pack film. Luckily, my buddy Josephine Ballin, aka Joey Bali, has a 4x5 camera, which is perfect because Joey and I's usual gear trade repayment policy is typically cash, grass, or uh, film cameras. So we got together and did what two bros do, shoot pack film. And what's even better, he brought along a pack of FP100B. From my very limited understanding, FP100B seems like it's just a black and white version of FP100C. I don't really know much about it and I never did any research on it, so I guess you're just stuck with my shitty attitude like usual. Anyway, like King Arthur wielding Mjolnir or some nerd shit like that, Joey rode in on his horse wielding a tripod and a super dangerous 4x5 large format camera. Bro, your lens is dusty. So we started out by shooting this random boat. As far as I know, we're the first photographers to ever shoot it. Literally no photographer has ever been here before. Just us. No one else. We are true photography pioneers. We started off with the FP100B, which is a somewhat rare black and white pack film. Because Joey and I are two evolved apes with big brains, we decided to save the color pack film FP100C for later when the sunset light turns a bit more golden orange. Turns out that didn't f***ing matter, but... Let's not jump ahead. For reference on these photos, the pack that Joey had expired in November of 2010. We started off by exposing the FP100B at the box ISO, which is 100. I went first. The process involves ripping things out of the back dramatically, so I was already on board. That was exciting. Look at us. We removed the pack All slide right. first and then placed the pack film holder on the camera and then removed the dark slide. Okay, so now it's ready to shoot. After shooting, I replaced the dark slide, pulled the tape to reveal the slide, and pulled the shot out through the rollers. We decided to let it develop for a minute per the instructions on the pack, but ultimately it didn't matter. As you can see, it looks like a nuclear bomb went off right next to us. And frankly, I wish it did, because now I was a bit embarrassed that I overexposed the crap out of some rare film. That's a little, uh, wow, like overexposed? That. It was becoming abundantly clear to us that we were going to have to play around some settings and figure this thing out. It wasn't going to be a simple exposure dial fix in Lightroom. Anyway, it was Joey's turn to accidentally overexpose some film and look dumb on camera. In an attempt to diagnose the problem, he tried the same exposure, but less development time, thinking maybe it was blown out because we somehow let it cook too long. Turns out it wasn't that either. With this guy there laughing at us, we became determined to get to the bottom of it. Two separate light meters were giving us the same values, so we could probably rule that out. So Joey took another shot at 100 ISO and was pissed off, so he ripped the first tab too hard in a furious rage and jammed it up. Oh no! This time around we decided to try developing longer, two minutes because this pack was expired and that just seemed right, but what the hell did we know? and it was slightly better, but we still weren't hitting the nail on the head yet. It's easier if you go top to bottom. There's a joke in there somewhere. With Joey growing more rageful and vindictive, I decided to come out of retirement and take a whack at it. I decided to fire off a shot at 320 ISO, which is about two stops underexposed, and then let it develop for three minutes. Is that slow enough for you, Joey? Ooh. 
and we got a little closer. This is my own take on that photo of a river that sold for like $4 million. So if you're interested in owning this copy for half that price, let me know. No refunds. So the weird thing we eventually figured out was that this expired pack film was no longer posting an ISO of 100. In its expiration, it somehow went up in sensitivity, which is literally the opposite of all film ever. How a film gains ISO after expiration makes no fucking sense to me, but that is apparently what happened. Yeah, pulling it way harder makes it... Makes it easier? Yeah. All right. It's a good life lesson. The next exposure, we did 400 ISO at three minutes development time, and that seemed to be the golden ticket. That was nice and slow. Yeah, just the way you like it. <laughs> oh! Ah yes, the head rush of peeling your instant film apart. Yeah, I mean, sex is cool and all, but seeing an awesome image right there before you, well, that's a high you'll be chasing the rest of your life. So with Joey finally dropping an image that wasn't a meaty turd of a photo, I became jealous. I had to do better. At the next location, I set up a long distance portrait of Josephine backlit by the sun and water. I don't know why I just gave you that trash. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. <laughs> nice and slow. Yeah. Oh, that was the slowest one yet. Yeah. I gotta change my pants. On this shot, we did four minutes of developing, and I think that's the sweet spot. Turns out I drastically overestimated how much exposure latitude is available on instant film. I actually dig this shot. It took some time uh, because I hated it at first, but now the image and I have squashed our beef and we're all good. It's so like depressing. Like how much you set up and then it's literally like, and that's it. Well, you still get the end result. Isn't that kind of worth something, Joey? <laughs> no. Bro, not again. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my. Where's your bag? I got trash. Yeah, thanks, ass. <laughs> Ooh, that's cool. I like how moody it is. So apparently I use the word moody when I actually mean underexposed. I guess this photo of the bay is okay. It probably could have benefited from a little more light and maybe a long exposure of the water. Your reaction? I could do better. That was so slow. Ooh, it's pretty moody. Mm. Feeling good with the last shot of black and white fired away, we started to inch closer and closer to the color pack film, which you can shoot with electronic flash if you'd like. For reference, this pack of FP100C expired in June of 2002. Struggling open. Oh, that does not look good. I'm not liking our chances, dog. My God. Oh, that smells too. It's all like crusty too. So it worked. We started off firing the same shot on color at 400 ISO and developing for three minutes as that might be a good place to start based on the black and white. Oh, that smells, man. Turns out it was super blue and underexposed. After that, we tried several different exposures, but we were having problems getting the pack film and the paper to stick together when we pulled it out of the back. So yeah, it was becoming quite clear to both of us that this pack film was not in good condition anymore, which is something I usually hear from my physician. They didn't even like hold. This one will, Joey. I feel it in my plums. It's stuck. <gasps> Hey! Eventually one shot stuck the landing and we figured out a trick that only the pros know. Hold. Stick the landing. Oh yeah. 
But here's another pro tip for this film. Get down on your hands and knees and pray to the only analog gods that you know that you get a photo with this stuff, because it's kind of a crapshoot. Now, I don't know what kind of expired film bullcrap this is, but this image looks straight out of some weird Shrek swamp horror movie. Whoa, dude, it's like a shitty like Photoshop post rise Whoa. effect. That's like some crazy like MySpace era filters. <laughs> oh, it smells like <laughs> though. The next few exposures were a random smattering of tests. Oh, what the f Dude, that looks like a nightmare. Anyway, as the light faded, our collective minds began to wander into deep reflection over our color images. These, oh my god, this smells like straight up ash cheeks though. My guess is that it seemed like the goo from the negative was somehow sticking to the positive. But then again, we aren't exactly the top experts in this field. We were in fact just two dumbasses shooting pack film in a field. What a great ending, right? We got a few happy endings. <laughs> we got happy endings, right? <laughs> Here's what these images look like when they're inverted in post, for anyone who cares. Anyway, before we wrap up the video, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Well, the secret is out. The trick to having a professional and easily manageable domain is Squarespace's all-in-one website building platform. Start from the ground up and make it your own with hundreds of template options professionally crafted by Squarespace and their team of designers. All-in-one means that with Squarespace, there are no plugins, patches, downloads, or extensions that you will need to acquire beforehand. It's all ready to go right out of the box, which I prefer. I've been using Squarespace for the past couple of years and I couldn't be happier with my photography website website and portfolio. When it comes time to change things up a little bit, Squarespace makes it easy with an intuitive and easy to navigate user interface that even someone like me who struggles with choices can understand. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So would I recommend FP100B or 100C? I mean, would you? You saw what FP100C looked like. I've seen prettier things come out of my dog. I would, however, definitely recommend 100B if you can find it, for the sheer fact that it somehow gained two stops of sensitivity and didn't look like an inverted ghoulish hellscape. Definitely stay away from super old cursed FP100C though. If it suddenly smells like chlorine blended with fresh out of the ass camel shit, you've come too close. However, with the prices on these packs ever increasing and the limited quantity in the world remaining, I think I'd have to say the obvious. The days of pack film are sadly behind us, especially because if you believe everything you read on the internet, Fuji apparently destroyed the machines used to make it. I don't know why the f they would do that, but I don't really understand anything Fuji does anymore. So anyway, big thanks to Joey for letting me use his 4x5, uh, his film holder, and some of his FP100B. And a big thanks to Fuji for casting some dark magic and imprinting a part of our souls into one of these horcruxes that should probably be destroyed for the betterment of humanity.